PR Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everyone. Welcome again to another edition, a special edition of In the Weeds with Jimmy Young, our regularly scheduled podcast that we do here at Pro Cannabis Media, not once, not twice, but maybe even three times a a week, because we just love to produce good content for the cannabis industry. And again, a reminder to like, share and subscribe, not just to our podcast, my podcast here, but also Green Rush Live Fridays at four, our We Talk News program and all the programming that we have here on the Pro Cannabis Media Network. I'm really happy to be sitting down. Well, not really. Yeah, I'm really happy to be sitting down, to be honest with you. Uh, It's snowing outside. I am here in my uh, townhouse and not in my office studio, but I want to welcome in Eric Robichaud from Green Goddess Supply. Uh, He's only about a half hour away location-wise from where I am, but Eric, it could be a completely different uh, part of the world because we're all in Zoom nation now, aren't we? Right, it's all virtual these days. Let's go. Tell, us, t- tell me a little bit, tell us, tell the audience a little bit about Green Goddess Supply. I mean, I could read your bio, but we'd be here for an hour. So just uh, walk me through what Green Goddess Supply does and how it relates to the cannabis industry and how in the world did you get into it? All right. All right. So that's that's a bit. Um, So Green Goddess Supply is a cultivation through the consumption lifestyle brand for the cannabis industry. Okay, so what that means is that we have a catalog of about 300 SKUs. Um, We're very well known for our wood products. Um, um, uh, For those who can see the video, I'm holding up my catalog and showing really nice bamboo wood products like sifter boxes, storage boxes, stash boxes rolling trays, things like that. We've got uh, you know, really nice high-end premium grinders, pipes, uh, you name it. And the crown jewel in the product line is the armoire, our home grow system. Um, the, um, the mission of the company is to help anybody anywhere to grow their own clean, organic, high quality flower at home themselves quickly, easily, discreetly, and inexpensively. So now we have the entire uh, gamut, if you will, the whole life cycle from now you can start right from seed, you can grow it yourself, then you can chop it, store it, grind it, roll it, smoke it, you know, end to end, to end the, whole, the whole life cycle yeah. um, with good quality, high quality uh, products. That's, you know, basically um, we saw a gap in the marketplace where a bunch of uh, just no, no um, unbranded, just kind of crappy import products. Um, and we wanted to produce a, a line of higher quality um, smoking accessories. Fantastic. And you've been doing this now for a half dozen years, if I remember correctly. Correct. Yes, absolutely. We're, uh, I think we're going on seven now, but the first, the first two to three years were part-time. And um, um, this was, I, I'm, I was a tech nerd by background. So I was always in uh, software development and that sort of thing. And, um, um, and this, my, my latest venture before Green Goddess had been an interactive agency. Um, it spawned out of basically what I had done um, going back early in my career is I started um, a software company um and um um from there i built that up over about 15 years and then at a certain point i uh, spun off another business sold that one and then off the spin off i ran a digital marketing agency for about 11 years and through that digital marketing agency is where green goddess got spun off um and um so um the um Sorry, so, so, someone's here who's not supposed to be here and making a lot of noise and distracting the crap out of me. <laughs> oh, don't worry about that. It, um, by the way, we're all used all to right. that over the last yeah, few yeah, years. Yeah, right? thing, right, right. The work from home <laughs> thing. Anyway, so. And um, I won't so, show you my upper thighs like in the commercial. You know what I mean? You remember that? Right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> so, so based on um, my last tech job, we were an interactive marketing agency. Um, and Green Goddess started off as a little side skunk works project um, related to the digital marketing agency. Agency. And it started to take off. Um, and after about two, three years of being this little side project, um, and, and it really started to, to take off, um, Vincent Batetti had reached out to me one day. And Vincent today in Green Goddess is my partner. He's the inventor of the armoire. 
Um, we had worked together since 1992 is when we first met. And from 92 up through 2000, call it like around 2017 or so, um, we had about 25 or so years together in the tech industry. And one day he calls me up and he says, um, I did a post online about Green Goddess. And he says, he calls me up and he goes, hey, I saw you posted something from Green Goddess. I'm like, yeah. He's like, you know those guys? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he goes, how well? Do you know him well? I'm like, really well. He's like, really? Really? Yeah. Now you're, you're playing with them. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, like, how do you know them? I'm like, I am them. And he's like, wait, wait, wait. What? What? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you're green. Like, yeah, we're green goddess. I'm green goddess. I'm like, wait a minute. Tell me about this. Wait a minute. You're in the cannabis industry? Like, because I was in software, right? I'm like, right. yeah. So I so I, so I tell him the story about how it evolved and where it yeah. came from, which all makes sense. It's a weird flow to say, you know, I started off at CVS and, and designed and coded their centralized credit card processing system to games and screensavers and, and then into web and interactive and digital agency and marketing and then into Green Goddess and Weed Access. But when you know the whole story, I mean, this evolved over 30 years, you know, in over right. 30 years, when you see how like one begets the next, begets the next, it makes sense, you know, but, uh, but he's sitting here, he's going, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, so back up here, how, how did it, so I told him the story and I said, you know, I'm like, why, why? Like, you're asking a lot of questions, you know, said, well, he goes, do you know that I grow? I'm like, <laughs> no, he goes, I've been growing since the seventies. Now, fast forward, basically he originally went to school, went to college for botany, botany and plant morphology. He's really into, into botany, the plants growing. He's a breeder, um, really, really super deep in consulting. Like he, big warehouse grows, have problems with spider mites, this, that, the other out in California, he's in the LA area. Um, he'd be called in as a consultant to help, you know, remediate, you know, problems and, and pest management and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, I have no idea. But you have to remember that that all through the 70s, 80s, 90s, even early 2000s, it was illegal. I mean, you didn't talk about this. So, you know, so software was our day job. That's what we did. But nobody talks about this. He goes, you smoke? I'm like, yeah, I started smoking for insomnia. You know, that so was, what is we, that we, talking? We, that's really <laughs> interesting. We worked I mean, for like 25 years together. We've done and hundreds, never knew. And hundreds of software products and never knew, had no idea, you know? No business so, trips together, nothing like that? Um, yeah, business trips, but it was always like, all business. Now I'm like, bring it. Like I said, it was illegal. So you're not bringing yeah. that up. I'm not really talking about it. You know, it's a professional business relationship, you know? Right. It is what it is. So, so that's yes. what he said. Well, you know, I've been working on this product, this home growth system. Um, he said, unlike anything else on the market, completely different approach to, 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 to the whole thing. Um, and, um, you know, he said, basically growing, it can be really, really complicated. Um, you know, too much nitrogen, not enough magnesium, how's your phosphorus, uh, you know, all these nutrient levels and when you dose and how much to dose and watering over water, underwater, you know, you got mold, mildew, you got pests, you got, you got just, just all these issues, you know, the light and radiation, light burn or not enough light and, you know, just, you know, all, all this crazy stuff. And there's so many things that can go wrong when you're growing, you know, you're growing outdoors, um, especially, but you, you're growing for, for um, you know, five, six, seven months at a time. Now I got the cat app on me. Uh, five, five, six months at a time. Um and there's a lot of time for things to go wrong. And you'd have a friend call up and say, hey, can you teach me to grow? I just want to grow one plant just for yeah. myself, just for, for, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be a grower. I don't want to sell it. It's not a business. Just for me, just, just one plant. It's all I, you know, can you teach me to grow? And he'd be like, where, where do I even start? These people know nothing about anything. Where do I even start? So he started thinking about it. And what he did was he, everybody else in the world, even to this day, everybody in the world basically takes the, traditional old school method of growing and tries like outdoor normal natural grow and then trying to replicate it indoors so we have the light to simulate the sun and then we have fans to simulate wind and you know you're watering it and blah 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 and we're trying to simulate and it's really complicated he said all right look if we control the environment like if i if i build this box and i know the box i know the environment i know everything about it we can eliminate a lot of variables it's not like going to a hydro store, you buy a tent and, and you're buying lights, you put in it, like, 
you know, someone wants like, all right, what do I do? Teach me to grow. It's like, well, I don't know what light you have or what kind of environment, how big is it? How small is it? There's so many variables. If we're controlling this and we can, we know everything about it. Right. Um, and what he did was he simplified the whole process. The way you grow is, is highly simplified and different than normal traditional grows. And so now what we, what we've done between hardware, software and protocol and everything else, we have turned this into a process where you basically water it once a day um, and you can get a, an average of about a quarter pound in around 60 days every other month or so. Very fast, super simple, dumb it down. And if you're getting four or five ounces every other month, that's, that's a lot for personal consumption. That's a lot. I know. Absolutely. I mean, uh, in Massachusetts, uh, medical uh, people like myself, a, a medical card holder, I, I believe the, the limit is... 10 ounces over two months. Okay. So, you know, and when I heard that, I was like, nobody can, unless you really need this for, uh, you know, a heavy radiation for cancer, or um, there are other diseases out there that it works very, very well with like Crohn's disease and MS and, and things like that. So I totally respect it as a plant medicine. And I also recognize the, the cost of it as a plant medicine for some of Absolutely. these patients. So what you guys are doing is really offering a service again to the industry, to people who can take care of themselves, grow it. And now here's the first question. It's a kind of an obvious question and it has to do with the odor of the cannabis plant. Yeah. Okay. You, you grow this inside a piece of furniture and I know they're right behind you over your, your right shoulder um, the screen. There it is. There it is. Screen left, as we say in the biz. And uh, we're going to take a little tour in a, in a second here, but I do want to ask you about the odor because in our new show this week, we're actually reporting on uh, an effort to take the smell out of the cannabis plant, which I guess would be quite a challenge scientifically, but they are trying to do that. That being said, how does the armoire work on that smell uh, issue? Right, right, 100%. <laughs> That's the short answer. So basically what we've done is we believe that we have solved all of the major issues with homegrown, okay? So first of all, we this is growing in a confined space, okay? So this isn't a four by eight tent. It's not an eight or 10 foot tall tent. Um, this is something that people like right now, this is in my living room. I'm doing this from home. This is in my living room. Normally people have one. I have a couple of them because, you know, I'm you can. prototypes and stuff <laughs> because I can. Right. Um, and, um, and, and it was a kind of a funny story about that one. The black one I brought home, uh, to do an unboxing video. So if you go to our website and you look, there's a up on YouTube and everything, and it's all linked from our website, there's an unboxing video, show you what to expect and how to open it up and, and how easy it is to put together. Cause it comes all assembled. You just have to put the, uh, for shipping purposes, you just got to like put the handles and the legs on and, and, and then clip in the light and hang the light and that sort of thing. But the, the unit itself is all assembled. And, um, so this is, this like is it, basically weed growing for dummies. Is this pretty much what it we is. created? I say here? that all the time. Yeah. This is like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like remember those for dummies books, the yellow books and stuff. Yeah. Right. This is like weed, weed growing for dummies. Um, this black one over here, um, I brought home to do an unboxing video. And I remember Jen looking at me, giving me this, the, 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 the hairy side eye, you know, and I, I'm like, no, no, it's just for an unboxing video. I'll bring it back to the office later. Well, that was a year ago. <laughs> you know, so it's like once it's here, you know, I guess possessions nine tenths. But anyway, um, so now I'm, I'm definitely I'm growing back and forth between two of them at a time. So I have one that's just starting and the other one's just finishing and I have them on cycles like this, you know. Um, and then I have another one behind me um, that's a that's a working prototype. That's a brand new thing that we're just working on and, and uh, a new models and stuff. And but what we did, uh, we as I was saying, I, we believe we solved all the problems of home grow. OK, so first of all, it's a small confined space. You can stick them right in your living room. If you're in a um, like you're in Boston, New York City, whatever you're in an in a, in a inner city apartment, you know, uh, 900 square foot apartment where are you stick in a grow tent. Yeah, nowhere. OK, but this you can stick right in your living room. Um, we designed it to be super discreet, you know, like a stealth box. Um, so it's designed to look like furniture. It's not furniture, but it's designed to look like it from the outside. I've had people come and sit right where I'm sitting right now. This is my dining room table. And then they're like behind me. I'm kind of like my, my, my first floor is just open floor space, like kitchen to living room, dining room to, to living room. Yeah. So we, we have, we have guests over and I've had guests where I don't know how they feel about weed. I just don't say a word. They just think they're cabinets and have no, we have a whole dinner party and they have no idea. 
Um, and, so and wait, now the take it to the next level. Have you ever had someone not really know and then open that door and go? <laughs> yeah, I've, ha I've had someone who I didn't know how they felt about it, so I didn't say a word and we just went about our business and we, had, we, had, we were having uh, some of uh, Jennifer's friends over for, for dinner. And, and then somewhere along the way, it got to, oh, so you'll work at, you know, so you do green guys, you sell like weed stuff. And I'm sort of like, oh yeah, yeah, I used to smoke or whatever. You know, they're talking like, oh, okay, they're cool. And, but I still kind of really, I really didn't say too much. And then the guy, um, uh, the husband is like, I really like your cabinets. Those are really nice. Like, like I do some woodworking and stuff, you know, can I take a look? So I'm like, sure. He's like, goes over and he's like, yeah, hey, they're on. They're like, so, oh, so this is i uh, I'm like, yeah, well, it's more of a veneer. He goes, oh yeah, I see. Okay. Okay. I'm like, yeah, you want to see inside? He goes, sure. I pulled him off. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. What? I like had just blown away. Had no, no, no clue at all. A total surprise. It was hilarious. It was absolutely hilarious. He's like, wait a minute. What? I'm like, yeah, it's not really furniture. It just looks like furniture. Like, oh my God. So they're up on legs. It's got an ergonomic design. Um, we have a lot of, uh, you know, baby boomers, retirees um, growing for medicinal purposes. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can just pull up a chair and sit at it to work on your plant and do stuff. So it's, it's raised up. Um, so there's a lot of little touches to it and things. It's, it's, things are done for a reason. Um, so it's an ergonomic design. It's, um, um, it's designed to be super simple, make it easy. Um, no smell. Um, amazing. and, um, and, and then, you know, there are fans running, so I, you, you, it's not silent. Um, okay. but if you've, if anybody who knows like comparisons to tents, like you right. don't have this like vortex fan, like, whoa, like, like run, like you're not sitting in the middle of a, a, a fan. Um, you know, they can be debate as to just how quiet or silent it is, but it's, um, like we've had, like there was one one customer was local I went into and we powered it up and, and there was nobody home. The house was silent and the customer uh, was like, huh, seems a little loud. Like, does it, it always, is that what it normally sounds like? I'm like, it's considered in decibels as like whisper quiet level. Right. And I'm like, white noise, yes. like white noise. It, yeah. And I said, you have, you have ceiling fans and I had ceiling fans running throughout the house. Right. I said, you have ceiling fans, right? Yeah. Yeah. Put it on, puts on the ceiling fan in the room it's like 10 times louder, you know, right. and like, I'm like, oh, it, it, it's that real, when it, when you can hear a pin drop, I mean, it's, there are fans running. I mean, it's not completely, it's not silent. Right. Um, but, but when you compare it, like they're, they'd put on a ceiling fan and not think twice about it. The ceiling fan is 10 times louder. Like, oh, oh, I see. Oh, oh, okay. I'm like, yeah, it's because right now it's the middle of the day. It's super quiet, you know? Um, so like I have two of, well, you probably can't hear it over the computer, but I have two of them running right here. Yeah, not even one, but two of them running, and it's it's you don't hear it, you don't you don't notice it. And, um, and, no, like and, I said, no smell. Yeah. Um, and um, so we made it easy. Um, we made it discreet. You know, no smell. Nice, small. You can stick it in a corner of a living room or in a spare bedroom or a home office or whatnot. Um, it it is meant to be seen, not hidden. Unlike tents, which people are trying to stick in their basement or up in an attic or trying to find a place to hide it uh, in a closet or something, you you don't have to hide them. Um, and, uh, like I said, no smell and with our protocol, it's super simple and it generally pays for itself in the first grow. Yeah. I, I think mean, that's great. Now, everybody's sitting, if they're watching this interview, as opposed to just listening to it, they want to see what's want to take a peek? inside the armoires. We want the, we want the guided tour, if you will. Let's we go take this. a peek. Yeah. We, we have, let's go take a peek. Go ahead. Well, I can, good. Uh, I can walk this over. Yeah, that's all right. You could walk it over and, uh, I'll be the stable one and, and, here we go into the black armoire. We're going to open her up. Open it up. The door comes right off. You can see off. the lights. And now wait till the uh, computer camera. There it is. So wow. you can see up here that this is the main exhaust fan. And that's the carbon scrubber that el eliminates the odor. Now uh -huh. that I've opened it, I can smell it. This thing is, uh, is in full flower. and it's Pungent. Lovely. All right. And then this is our uh, proprietary uh, new grow light. It's got dimmer knobs to control. Um, it's got the latest uh, technology, not only LED, but it's got cob LEDs, which are a newer technology, super dense and energy efficient. Um, yep. And this is the plant I've got going inside. This is no, one I, plant. I love it. It's bushy and beautiful and female, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. See the flowers? Yeah. It's beautiful. You know, there's the people in this industry love looking at the plant 
the flowers on the plant. And uh, I can imagine having that in your living room is just so much, it's fun in a lot of ways. It's certainly, it's certainly a conversation piece. Um, Eric, the one thing we really haven't discussed, and, and thank you for that tour, um, is what's the price point on this? I mean, it's a piece of furniture. You know, if you go to Jordan's Furniture and you, you know, happen to see an armoire, you're talking a couple of thousand bucks or so. I mean, what, uh, you know, what's your price point on that? Sure, sure. So the uh, the box is um, the box itself is uh, fifteen ninety five, um, and that's mostly you know uh, we, we were trying to keep it a little bit lower. They were a little bit lower originally, but with everything going on and shipping and and Supply, logistics, yeah. supply chain issues and all that, uh, prices have all gone. I hear up. we're having some inflation now too. I, yeah, I've read about that. Yeah. Yeah. So all of our oh yeah exactly. So all of our costs are going up. Um, and uh, so it's 1595 and it's about 280 um, for uh, for shipping unless uh, they're local in Massachusetts and want to come to the office to pick up um, that could that can be arranged. How heavy is it? Uh, oh, it's not heavy at all. Um, yeah. the, whole, the whole thing, the packaging, the pallet that like when we ship them and then mm -hmm. we put them on a pallet to ship, um, they um, the whole thing is like 170 pounds and like 25 of that is the pallet and another 20 of that is all the boxing and and because you know, it's a nice thick like one inch thick cardboard boxing and all that stuff the unit itself um like if you just took it it's about 40 50 pounds i mean i can lift it up just move it around you know it's it's it's, it's not that heavy at all um it's more just awkward we tell people like you know have a friend help you pick it up grab one grab you know tilt it over and each, each grab an end but just because it's big you know just just right. awkward not not heavy it's not heavy I, I can literally vertically lift it up and move it myself big. um so it's not heavy at all um so it's about 15 so the, the typical all in by the time you're done with shipping and all that stuff it's usually about 1800 bucks Okay. Um, and, and now that, that what, the, it doesn't come with the seeds or, or clone or anything, does it? Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 three things that you need are just each time you're growing your consumables of water, soil, and seed. Okay, okay. that's yeah. that's what you need each time. Gotcha. Um, other than that, it's got from a hardware standpoint, it has everything all tuned, all goes together. That light, um, we call it our unicorn light, unicorn series, because it is a unicorn. There's nothing exactly like it on the market. We we designed and engineered this to grow to give us maximum uh, radiation output, maximum par um, in a minimal footprint um, in, for a small confined space with the minimal, uh, the highest output with the lowest heat um, output. Um, and the whole thing is designed. I'm sorry. Good. No, it's, one more question comes to mind when you talk about the heat and the light and you know there have been a, a lot of accidents by these amateur growers that are putting up these tents and with canopies in the basements of their houses and having no clue on what to do plugging it into the wall and blowing up the house okay yep. we know that it is a danger it, the danger is humanity okay the danger is that people aren't doing this through educated process, they're just doing it and learning by doing, which can be dangerous if you're in a house or in an apartment building. This has a as a enclosed Safe. device, and you told me they're all LED, so they're not getting hot, right? It, it, no, 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 no. Right, right. This thing runs all the time. Like I could, I could have this thing running for 18, 20 hours, just walk up, put my hand right against it. It's cool to the touch, you know. Um, so it, when I say heat, I mean like within the atmosphere with the, you know, the, the right. energy, what happens is the air uh, absorbs the energy, the radiation and warms up. Um, and, um, you know, the, the thing is that like 80 degrees, 80, let's say 85 degrees will kill the plant. It's fine for you and me. You know, when I yeah. say hot, I'm not talking about melting stuff. I'm talking about, but I'm just talking about for the plant's health, um, mitigating heat issues for the plant. Um, the plant likes to be, you know, between 67 and 77 degrees, kind of room temperature, like 70s, you know, kind of room temperature. Um, but, uh, but this is, uh, um, it, it's designed to look like furniture and it's veneered, but it's actually a synthetic material, kind of like a PVC type of, uh, foam board type material that is anti-mold, anti-microbial, anti-mildew. So you're not gonna grow mold, mildew or any of that kind of stuff. You can just wipe it right down, it's non-porous. Um, if you ever had a male plant in there with pollen sacs bursting or whatever, you just wipe it down, you're all set. You're not gonna pollinate your plants from, you know, you can just wipe it down. If you had wood or something, you know, that can get into the pores and into the, you know, and, uh, but this is uh, completely smooth and flat like glass. You can wipe it down um, and, um, 
and it's a hundred, it's, it's the highest fire retardant rating you possibly get. I, I forget how it off the top of my head, like N95 or so I forget exactly what it is. Um, but it's, um, the highest fire retardancy rating. So basically it won't catch flame. It won't catch fire at all. At most it would maybe melt, <laughs> but it's, it's not going to catch fire. Yeah. Um, I want to so, go back to just the first story about you and Vincent at the beginning of all this and the fact that you guys knew each other so well, you worked together and then you didn't really under, know that you both were users and, 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 and you were enlightened, as I like to say, do you partake? Are you enlightened? You know, yeah. and uh, I wonder how many other stories of other people over the years um, that haven't come out of the cannabis closet, if you will, uh, don't recognize that the person in the next cubicle over has the same kind of habits or uses of this plant that they do. But there's always that awkward stigma about talking to somebody about that, because back then, as you mentioned, it was more illegal than it is now because now we have legalized states. We've got medical programs in 37 states in the United right. States. So we've, right. we've made tremendous progress since the since those days when it was done in a parking lot or down the aisle in a you know in a, in a in an alley or something like that. Right, uh, right. This is right in front of you now, and it, and, it's and, and by population is something like I, I don't know the exact number, but 80 or 90 percent of the population. So like you say, 37 states, but when you look at the prohibition states. Um, you know, okay, so North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, like, well, all three people in Montana, you know, so I mean, it might not be 50 states, but it's not by population, all the population, I mean, as we know, like, look at voting and things like that, you know, population mm -hmm. is on the coasts, in the big cities. Well, I mean, you've got, you know, all of California, you get the whole West Coast, everything from from Seattle, the, you know, you got Washington, uh, Oregon, and and California, you get down through, you know, you got the all through the South. Right. Um, and, um, and, and back up again that have at least medicinal, um, Texas doesn't, um, other than that, now, most of the other States, um, all have at least medicinal, uh, yep. and then all the way back up the coast again. Uh, okay. when you look at the population centers, those 37 States account for like 90% of the population. Right. But that, the last stat I saw recently this past week, I believe was, and this is for the over 18 crowd, which I was kind of surprised. Why wouldn't they do an over 21 crowd? Okay. But yeah. Right. Seventy-three percent of over eighteen-year-olds in the United States now live in legal states, have legal access to cannabis, and we're still fighting acceptance in the banks, in the federal government. It is at some point this has to move the needle towards uh, at least decriminalization uh, federally uh, to get it off the schedule one of the controlled substances act i mean we're all sitting here in this business and we get it okay but the mm -hmm. rest of the world is still against it, it or not against it, excuse me still is living under the impressions that were told to them 20 30 80 years ago yeah the crazy um, thing is that it's 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 not a partisan thing republicans and democrats i mean it's just a human thing i mean everybody just agrees everybody just agrees that you know like you said 73 percent support um it's got like far exceeding a super majority of support there's really no good reason other than the 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 politics back home of you know the, the, the folks who don't want to be the one who say, I voted for this and then have to go back and face a local election and have certain constituents who are mad at them or whatever. And they, they just don't want to like do any certain people that don't want to do anything that's um, um, I don't know. They have to I mean. learn about it. They have to educate themselves. They actually, actually have to care enough about their constituents to do research on what this is all about. And that's what bothers me. Do some homework. Our yeah, I think they officials. don't want to do anything that's controversial. That's not good for voting. You know what I mean? They well, don't want to do anything but, controversial. But. but but now that it becomes a political issue, Eric, now that it becomes, you know, in legislatures, they're talking about this all over the United States because they see it as a tax uh, enhancement that you can actually uh, help different causes like your roads, your schools. I mean, there's right. lots of opportunity here. And whenever there's money involved, they're looking for a way, obviously, I believe, to get a piece of the action to move this policy forward. And that has yet to be figured out at the at the um, federal level. Yeah, I, I, th I think I think the best thing I've said it for, for years, the best thing that, the, that they could do at the federal level is not try to regulate it. Don't try right. to don't try to legalize it. Just right just decriminalize it, remove it from schedule one and leave it to the states, let the states figure it out and they right. can do what they want. And if they want to make it, a, you know, and then, and, and then 
that just kind of, I don't want to say kicks the can down the road, but in a very positive way, right? feds just say, leave it up to the states. You guys figure it out. We're all good. It's just not federally illegal anymore. Now you have access to your banking. See, right now, I think that's incredibly unsafe. The whole banking situation is just nuts because, yeah. because, it's, just, because it's schedule one. Um, you not, not only do you have the hassles and the problems of not being able to do banking and you can't take credit cards and you can't, you know, debit cards and things like that. And so, you, you, you know, you've got people showing up at the state house to pay their taxes with like, you know, briefcases full of hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash and handing it over. And then the secretary on the other side of the window is like, I don't want to hold on to a quarter million dollars in cash, you know, like, uh, you know, nobody wants, you know, it's just, it's just not safe. You know, you have all that money, all that cash sitting around. Um, it's a and by the way, let me ask you a question because I just saw a column of, on Gondrepreneur about media bias. Have you ever seen a news story or a video of that exact scenario? In other words, somebody showing up to pay their taxes with suitcases of cash to actually yeah. show people what this industry has to go through because they don't have access to banks. Have you ever seen a story on that? I actually have. I saw a story in uh, in print. It was a newspaper article, and it was a picture of a guy standing at a window with a with a briefcase full of money. And it was a true story. It was like this guy has to pay his payroll taxes, go down to the state house with a briefcase full of money, paying wow. hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash. And that's and it was it was a story exactly about that. And they had, they they followed him one day and took a picture of him doing it. And it's like he's like this is not safe. This is just not safe. That's right. Um, well, there is media know. bias, and I know that, and that's one of the reasons why I started pro cannabis media a few years ago because we wanted to be able to tell the stories of the industry in their own words, and we're doing that. And Eric, you did a great job of explaining the benefits of the armoire and how it Thank works. You. I think it's a great product. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we have we've had hundreds and hundreds. We're up to about five, six hundred units out there now. Um, and uh, it, we're starting to win awards. Um, we've won two different awards now. Uh, most innovative tech product of 2021, et cetera, et cetera. And um, um, and we just have 95 percent of our customers have never grown before. Here, here's I'll throw you a couple of quick statistics. Uh, Go ahead. 90, I love 90, statistics. Yeah. Ninety five percent of our customers have never grown before. Yeah. Um, and we make sure they're successful. See, one of the things too that's uh, uh, an industry first is uh, our concierge service. Oh. So unlike grow tents and other things where you buy the hardware and you're on your own, um, we have concierge service and you can buy extended for two years or we give you, everybody gets 90 day free concierge service to get you through your first grow. And we will literally actually get on a video call with you and teach you and show you how to do Thanks. certain little techniques and things to goose your, your, your yields and so forth. So we have with humans. Wait, wait, wait. With human beings. With human beings. Yes. 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 We, we have dedicated people, <laughs> really good, really good, dedicated people. That's all they do all day long on our staff is just help people with their gross. And um, and it's um, uh, growing in the armoire, I should say. I, I understand. Um, and I understand. and um, we um, but we have, like I said, 95 percent. They're beginners. They've never done this before. And you should see, if you follow us on social media, you see, I keep posting all the time, like another newbie, never done it before. And you see these big, huge, gorgeous they have plants like this. This is what yeah. they look like. Uh, big, huge, gorgeous plants. This guy's like, oh, we have one guy. He got six, 6.1, I think, ounces um, out of, of, of premium bud. And he said, and I had another ounce and a half that, of the popcorn stuff that I just didn't feel like trimming. So I just threw it all in the trim to make butter from it. But he like literally got 6.1 ounces of, of top quality flour, plus another ounce I just threw into trim. Right. <laughs> you know, That's I was great. like, and if you do the math, and if you do the math, and you know what an ounce goes for, which is really, oh, it's like 1800 bucks. Street price. It's like eighteen hundred dollars right. street price. I mean, that's right. why I say it pays for itself in the first grow. I mean, it really does. You know, we have and I have written case studies of people um, where you know um, instead of opioids, they talked to their doctor. They were able to do cannabis instead of they were uh, deathly afraid of opioids, getting addicted, and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So they're using medical cannabis um, for for you know medicinal cannabis. And at first, it was okay. It was the the husband and the wife both. Uh, they were spending uh, about 500 bucks a month at the dispensary between the two of them. I mean, this is between the two of them. Right. And, um, and they, um, and that was fine at first, but then they retired and she, you know, they were at that age and they retired. That's when she reached out to us, found out about us and was like, bought the armoire 
and basically went from $6,000 a year on cannabis, which she said, when we were both working, I mean, you know, you're not that you want to spend it, but like, okay, you can. Uh, right. But she says, we're retired now. We're on a fixed income. Like now, now that's a lot of money. And like, uh, you know, so they bought the armoire. And now instead of $6,000 a year, they're spending about two to 300 bucks a year. Cause wow. this thing sips energy. It uses almost nothing for, for energy. Um, it's like the equivalent of like two 100 watt bulbs. It's like, it's like almost nothing. Um, and um, so it, it's super efficient and um, you're spending like two, $300 a year between, you know, uh, with like four or five grows a year. Um, they're getting about five plants a year. Um, you got, you got like, you know, $10 for the, for the soil. You got, um, you know, so that's like 50 bucks a year, you know, right. some water, a couple of seeds, you know, it's like. If you're you know, a gardener. You certainly know what those are and where to get that stuff. Eric, where, where can they get it? Give your website a plug. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, our main website that has everything, including all of the, the grinders and everything else is green goddess supply. You will have three S's in a row because two S's for goddess and then supply green goddess supply.com. We're on Instagram at, at green goddess supply. Um, if you're interested in the grow stuff, um, you can find, we have one called the armoire dot store. And it has just, just about the armoire. We have like a, an Instagram you know, broken out and a website broken out just for the armoire called the armoire.store. Um, and then the third one I'll give you, I also have GGS underscore home underscore grows. GGS home grows um, is just dedicated to growing. Um, so we have a couple of Instagram accounts and Facebook pages and stuff just dedicated to growing. And then the main one for everything else. That too is a challenge, but we don't have time to go into the challenges of social media for the cannabis industry. How's that? And that's why we have so many different accounts and all this stuff, because it's just really hard doing work in this industry. Right. It just is. It sure is. But Eric, you're doing a great job. You get a great product. I told you I'd give you an audience that can you can share about what this product's all about, because I believe in it. And I think you've done a great job um, giving it uh, a showcase tour, if you will, to our audience. So I want to thank awesome. you. Thank for you for joining us again, uh, joining us for the first time here on In the Weeds with Jimmy Young. So Eric Robichaud, again, thank you from Green Goddess Supply, from everyone here at Pro Cannabis Media. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And it is a whole new world of weed out there. Use it responsibly. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Meet Caduceus Science, the alternative wellness company. You know CBD, but how about CBG, CBN? That's right, Caduceus Science produces a range of full-spectrum products, all lab-tested in small batches to maintain the highest quality of products. CaduceusScience.com Hey, you want to grow your own plants? Check out Style Lighting's Grow Kit. It has everything you need to become an expert home grower and bring the power of the sun indoors. Style Lighting uses TCP's high-powered commercial LEDs that deliver twice the output in the market. The Grow Kit has a grow bag, a timer, chains to hang the light, and of course the best in the business lighting system by TCP. Check out stylelighting.shop for more information. Weed Talk and In the Weeds are two productions of Pro Cannabis Media supported by Revolutionary Clinics, one of the top medical cannabis dispensaries in the Massachusetts area, now with three locations in Greater Boston, two in Cambridge, and one on Broadway in Somerville. Rev Clinics has a patient-first mission. They will customize your needs as a medical patient with the proper titration and combination of strains, flavors, and products. Rev Clinics, where the patient comes first. Difference is building a solution for that individual. Not just a custom, here's a box, here's a video, here's how you make your VMS. We custom design and custom build every situation for exactly what the customer needs. 
and we keep the cost low. We have multiple tiers, you know, as far as what you're looking at on the cost side of things. If you want a one time, you know, where you just pay one initial cost, we have that. If you want to maintain your system and have the highest protection and highest capabilities and highest upgrades at all times, we have different plans for you. But we scale it so it's scalable and affordable 100%. Pro Cannabis Media Programming is available live and on demand on our Facebook page at Pro Cannabis Media, on Instagram at Pro Cannabis Media, on LinkedIn also at Pro Cannabis Media, on YouTube and YouTube Live on Pro Cannabis Media, Twitter at Pro Canna Media, and on twitch.tv backslash Pro Cannabis Media. So like, share, and subscribe to all of our content, newsletters, and shows live or on demand. We are Pro Cannabis Media.